Good afternoon, and welcome to episode nine of Three Feet from Gold, Fiji and Beyond. My name is Jeremy Murphy. I'm a positivity health and running coach in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I'm joined by my friend, Ha Tran. Hello, everyone. My name is Ha Tran, and I'm a motivational speaker, a published author, and a navigational coach. And um, I'm glad that, um, I hope that you will be here shortly. <laughs> but anyway, so um, today we the the, um, the title is um, Fiji and Beyond. Uh, I, I love that. It, on that? I, I don't have any reservation on it, but perhaps we should start packing and uh, travel somewhere exotic, tropical, and relaxing like that. What so do you think? Fiji? Okay. Uh, Fiji or anywhere in the South Pacific, for that matter. <laughs> Yeah, that are very exotic um, places that, um, you know, if, if you have to uh, uh, want to put anything in your bucket list, I think that it would be of the bucket list for sure. It would have to be. Yes, you can go island hopping through that whole area. So uh, visit a lot of places at once. Yeah. And, you know, when we go back to the book that the um, uh, three feet for, from go and that is um, Fiji and beyond. So, um, what do you think about this chapter? I would love to answer that, but before I do, we've got to do oh, some yeah. minor housekeeping that if I don't do it now, we're going to forget. Oh, um, we already forget already. Thank you very much for reminding me of that. Sure. The uh, We did ask the Napoleon Hill Foundation for permission to use the title of this show and to present this series, and they did give us their consent, but they asked us to read a notice to tell you more about the foundation so that you can look them up and maybe get their help with different things. So here's what they asked us to read. Three Feet from Gold is used with the consent of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. However, the foundation has no control over and does not endorse the blab.im platform or content. To learn more about the Napoleon Hill Foundation, go to www.naphill.org. Okay, and the book we're talking about is The uh, Three Feet from Gold, and this is uh, chapter 11. Okay, so let's unpack that. The, this chapter is interesting because it, it, it reminds us of a couple of different things. It reminds us of the importance of rest, relaxation, um, and, and taking a moment to really reflect on where we are and get some perspective and make sure that we're going the right direction. Okay, and then, uh, you know, for us, as for uh, Craig, this is um, that a much needed, um, uh, you know, the, the, the play for him to visit. And um, so, you know, I, I think that uh, for him is uh, to look back that how far has he come, you know, come to that point that the, the Fiji Island and, um, you know, I couldn't hold it, but to thinking about his journey, he already um, got to do a good place, don't you think? I would agree. I, I think it, it's very interesting if you reflect back to the beginning of this book from this point, you, you see a, a self-centered Greg at the beginning it, that, you know, someone that might actually have conceit issues, which is referred to by the in the Napoleon Hill quote that starts this chapter. And, and by this point, you just you see someone that's more generous and giving and really thinking about how how can I serve others? How, how can I serve others in a meaningful way to help them lift them up, transform their lives? Yeah, he really in the position of unselfish um a right. position because he started thinking about his journey. How can he pass along what he uh, have had learned to exactly. other people? And then, mm -hmm. therefore, the um, giving birth to this book, the three feet from gold. Right. So I, I'm I'm very intrigued by the uh, the quote of um, Napoleon Hill on the uh, the beginning of the chapter. Um, you want to take a um, <clears throat> uh, a shot at it and uh, what it means sure. to you. Yes, uh, here's the quote, and this is by Napoleon Hill, who wrote uh, Think and Grow Rich. Um, but here's the quote. It's, uh, conceit is a fog that envelops a man's real character beyond his own recognition. It weakens his native ability and strengthens all his inconsistencies. And uh, when I 
see this, what I think about is uh, just how sometimes we have good clarity and sometimes our, our vision gets clouded by our own self-centeredness and, uh, you know, wanting to satisfy our own needs instead of helping others. And it just, it, it causes us to move in the wrong way, in the wrong direction. And, uh, you know, even undertaking the wrong activities that uh, are just designed to trumpet our own abilities when in fact we should be doing the opposite. We, we should be, uh, the, the people we should be bragging about are, are others. And, and if we're bragging about others and how wonderful they are and their strengths and their abilities and looking for their internal greatness and how to bring that out, I mean, that that's really, that's the clarity that can dispel some of the uh, the fog that um, in the conceit that Napoleon Hill is talking about here. Um, do you think this is the case of the um, highly self-evaluate oneself? I, I think we do have to evaluate ourselves at a deep level. And I, I think if we fail to do that, we, we get to a point where we're just... Uh, it, it, it's all about us. It, it's all about, oh, look at me. I, I did this and I did that. And I, I think of children saying, uh, mom and dad, look, look at me, look at me. And, and we shouldn't be doing that as adults. I mean, that's not, it, it, it's not a healthy way to live. If we are living like that, we're, we're not taking a deep enough dive to really discover who we are, why we're here and uh, how, how we can help and serve others in a meaningful way. And that is the too much of the pretend. So, I mean, that is the time for us to um, knock off the, the veneer in order for yes. us to see who truly, who we are, our own talent and our own gift. That's important, yes. And I, I'm glad you put it that way. It reminds me of how, how superficial sometimes we can be when we're in this uh, conceited sense of uh, fog, which clouds our vision. And, and if we take the superficial layers off, and get down to who we really are and have the courage to share that with the world, it can just, it can transform so many people's lives. What do you think about when people are talking about the mindset and because you have to thinking of yourself in the higher level, um, is that we, we kind of step into that line that when we just try to think of how wonderful we are and uh, we, we want to, uh, to step into that vision, or um, do you think that entire different thing when he talked it um, in, in this quote? Well, they, I, I'm not sure that our our mindset can stand by itself. I, I think it, it, if it's going to be authentic, it has to be tied to our innermost self, our 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 soul. And if if our spirit and our mindset are are in alignment, we're just going to have a um, much stronger ability to help people. And so, so if for me, I, I can't, I can't really see the mindset independently. I, I try, but whenever I do, I, I keep thinking about the soul, the spirit, they're, they're intimately tied to each other. They're supposed to be. And sometimes we have trouble or chaos come in our lives and, and they get detached and that causes problems for all of us. We're just, we, we have a great mindset or we think we do, but it's detached from our soul or we lose touch with with who we really are in that uh, soul. And then we have to go back and dig and, uh, and find that. And, and once we do and have those reconnected, then we really have something powerful that can help people. You know, what uh, you just said uh, remind me of the couple of chapter way back. And we were talking about um, the, um, the farming and cultivating. And so, um, if I understand correctly, you said that, you know, some kind of the, your, your gift and your talent just, um, in the process, you recognize it. And then now in order for it to bloom, you have to put in, in the time and to, uh, to sharpening your skill and just like you cultivate it in order to make it blossom. Yes. And, and we can't rest very long. My, my dad used to always tell me, don't, don't rest on your laurels. And, and Say I- that again? He said, don't, don't rest on your laurels. Yeah. And I, I, I had to ask him, I said, what, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I don't understand what you mean. So he explained it to me and he said, you know, I know you've accomplished some great things, but I'm expecting more of you. So I want you to focus on that, focus on where you're going and not get so 
uh, happy about where you are that that that's just uh, all you're talking about. You you have to you have to move forward. You can't you can't li- we can't live in the past. It you know it, it's not we can take the good things from the past and learn the lessons of the things that didn't go right, but but we have to move forward. Thank you so much for shed some light on that. Um, you and I, we are very, very lucky because I, I have a father who also um, nurtured uh, me and, uh, you know, he really, um, uh, uh, in, in the way that he instilled his value in, mm-hmm. um, uh, in me, um, what, what's in the, the same line with what you just said. My father said, you know, when you're on the right track, you have to keep on moving. Because if um, uh, if you are not moving, if you stand still one place, you will become a part of the scenery. Yeah, that that's a great uh, it's a great insight. You know, we we don't uh, we don't think about things like that. But I to hear something like that and to have it based on someone's life experience and someone that we love very much and mm-hmm. has a big impact on us. That that's uh, it's great to have. Um, deep nuggets of wisdom like that given to us at, as gifts. They're, they're yeah. really gifts, aren't they? If we don't see them like that, we, we don't really learn from them, do we? You know, at, at one point, he was just, what he just saying, you know, it means like nothing to me. Boy, until I was, um, uh, I had grown up a lot since I left my father's house. So something like that, I'd come back and just provide me such a valuable lesson. Good. You know, in, in the American culture, I think that Will Roger, he said that if you are on the right track and you are not moving, you will get run over. Yeah. Uh, so that, that what, um, yeah, but uh, I keep on remember what my father said is more powerful to me that I don't want to be a part of the scenery. Right. Yeah, I, I think we're all called to be more than that. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. it, it, we, we have to ask ourselves, though, what, why are we here? Not just why are we here today, but why are we here on earth? What What is our central mission that, that we're called to do? Yeah, I, I think that um, that make us become who we are just because of um, the, the way we are thinking. You know, just like, okay, we need to know that uh, what is the lesson here? What is our purpose to right. put in this position? What lesson we learn and how we, um, you know, just like um, uh, at one point that you shared the story of running on empty uh, with uh, me and the, the viewer. And um, I, I, I truly believe that is, um, <clears throat> you know, something uh, out there and just like your experience is that for you to uh, have a compassion for with your clients. Because if you don't experience that, when you hear somebody talk about that, you just cannot imagine what that person talking about. Because, you know, and because of your experience, that's why you have such a great passion to your clients. That that's a great point. I, we we do the struggles that the struggles and difficulties, the challenges that we're able to overcome. If we have the courage to share those with others, it, it has the power to inspire others and to help them feel like. Well, they can do this too. And mm-hmm. They might do it in a slightly different way that might work better for them. But to know that uh, you and I have overcome things that have uh, challenged us and be able to share those with others, I, I think that uh, really helps people see that that they can do great things too. E- even if it feels like you're at a brick wall and there's no way out and there's only one path, there's always another way. But it takes yeah. discernment. We have to step back, look for that clarity, discern. Um, sometimes it involves talking to people we know, like, and trust that really know who we are and what we stand for and what we don't stand for and um, allowing them to help us find that clarity, vision, and discernment that we need to really be going the right direction. You know, uh, what I'm going to share with you is that my entire, uh, through my own experience, but you must be have some experience of yourself. You know, I know that when I'm facing the brick war, I need to really uh, move back a few steps in order for me to see, you know, in the, uh, maybe more than a few steps, but I need to go back there quite a little a bit in order for me to see the entire picture. But see, when you see the whole picture, then you can, you know, beginning to ask the question and you start to see the solutions uh, 
um, uh, you know, how to get out of the situation you are in. But if you are too close to it, you don't see anything. Oh, Everything so true. is so monumental, and then so it's true. just so you cannot overcome. Yes, and I it, it's uh, it, one one technique that I have, and this may not work for everyone, is to I I close my eyes and visualize that I'm somewhere else. And I have to have a strong, vivid image that uh, that I'm really there, and that's that's where this sort of intersects with the uh, uh, Fiji theme here. I mean, if if people have been to Fiji and they can visualize that and have a vivid image, I mean, and have that sort of relaxed island tropical perspective on things, it does allow you to be more detached from your situation. You're you're somewhere else. I. You know, I, I, I'll i travel to Ireland in my imagination and I'll, I'll have much different thoughts than I do when I'm just looking at Lincoln, Nebraska. It it changes everything. It gives you a, a the 30,000 foot view or, or higher, depending on, you know, how you want to look at it. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's a great segue um, for us to go back to the uh, chapter 11, because um, I, I think that um, the, the gentleman that Craig um, met, um, at the in the Fiji, uh, his name is John uh, Hope Ryan, and he's talking about um, uh, success. Uh, success is the reward for a setback. Did that he say something in that? You remember? Yes, yes. I think uh, I think that is what he said. Uh, you know, but the... you know, we got it. But but uh, exactly that. You know, because if, if you see that the, the roadblock, and then you start to taking a different approach, and you see how you get there, and maybe because the setback that make you determine more than ever to overcome that, and that is um, when you overcome it, you go, you know, along on your journey. That is success, and so a setback is is the rewarding for success. If if you, uh, yeah. I, yes, I, I think uh, I think you've stated it correctly. And I, I think Bryant is important in this book because he gives us a, a snapshot of someone that has a global vision for helping people around the world, uh, of seeing the intense need of people in Africa or Asia or people that are, you know, afflicted by uh, um, natural disasters and things like that. They're just you know, sometimes we just think we, we can only help the people that are close to us geographically. And that's why his presence in this book is so important, because it it, it shows us we, we really do have a small world with great needs. Um, but we have to have the courage to reach out in order to be successful and help more people. Yeah, Jimmy, we and I, you and I, we're talking about the compassions and uh, according to um, uh John Hope Bryant, Bryant, yeah, Bryant, he, he, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's talking about his uh, experience of the homeless, and um, you know, and he uh, he said that you know, um, uh, just because of that, now his mission is to help um, the people that um, to overcome that, and he said that the success, of the two most uh, essential ingredient for that is a mission and a vision. Yes. And those are core, core values. I mean, you cannot, uh, we, we can't function very powerfully or very meaningfully without uh, either of those. Um, so, I, and Brian's a great example of someone that had really thought through that, made sure that his mission and vision are uh, clear and that he's pursuing both of them and, and that they're, in, they're interwoven. They're they can't really be removed from each other. They're they're different and distinct in some ways, but but they're intimately tied together. Yeah, and I, and you know I, I I agree with him and totally too. But you know to the the, the people and um, you know until you engaging into it until they have the mindset that uh, thinking differently when when they say. What is the mission? What is the vision? Hey, I'm hungry. I need food. Just give me food and then pay my rent and then talk to me about that. But um, for um, uh, um, Brian, to hate thinking that I, I have to really verify his name. It just drive me crazy. You, you have it right. It, John, Brian. John Hope Bryant. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, and, yeah. 
Yeah, and he talking about his, his journey uh, to help other people, and um, you know, and then to, to one thing that he, he talking about um, the two differences he do, he did uh, the distinguish between the being broke and being poor, and you know you hear people talk all the time about that and they pass her by and then you just listen and you don't quite you know what would they really say in that but now when you read it and he explained it carefully you remember what he said being poor and being broken what are the differences how he distinguished the two terms yeah the being being broke is a temporary condition and, and it's a temporary condition that we all go through it, it's transitory and uh being broke is interesting to me because we all have a different we all have a little bit of brokenness in us, a, a little bit of imperfection. And it's the type of thing where uh, for people that are homeowners, if something breaks in your house and you have to, we have to go find a tool to go fix it, uh, put it back up in the wall if something falls off the wall. Um, but it, that's what I think of as an example of if something's broke. Um, now, as far as being poor, I mean, that that's a, that's a um, problem that affects the the mindset at a deep level. In fact, I, I would argue that it affects, and this is my interpretation, but I, I think it affects the spirit also. I, I mean, we have, it, it's more than just being brokenhearted. It is just, uh, you know, being caught up in the negative cycle and you can't break out of that circle and it just keeps getting worse. And, um, the, the circle perpetuates more negativity. And, and so until we can break that with a, a mindset shift and, and a spiritual transformation, I think we have to have both or we can't pull out of that. You know, then we can get to a point and say, okay, maybe, maybe I'm not poor. Maybe I'm just broke or, or broken in some way. I need need a little bit of help with something. You know, you, you, you know, you are so right, and I totally agree with that. And when you talk about being poor, I mean, you get beat down by the circumstances and you stay down. Exactly. That's sad, right? Yes. But being broke is definitely the temporary the situation because the economics or, or whatever going on, but it always have a solutions. True. Because it's just like you fall down, you find a way to get up. But being poor, you get beat down and you stay down. Right. And, and, and you, how, and you refuse to take it and a, a positive step to break the circle or cycle that keeps uh, spinning. I mean, we have to sort of pull pull a spoke out of the wheel to stop that from spinning. And if that happens, then then we can have the shift occur. Yeah. And, and you know, and then um, uh, Brian had say something very um, <clears throat> Um, you know, very um, profound uh, to me. And I, I remember that um, Winter Churchill also said something similar to that. Success that consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. You know, because I see that the spirit, then see that what you're talking about, the spirit, and you keep on, you know, you get beat down, you get up, you know, you get... You know, I mean, if you just fall on your face, all the sweat and all the dirt and uh, all the blood in your face, but you get up and you wipe your face off with your arm and with your sleeve and you keep on going. Yes. I, and I Churchill talked about blood, sweat and tears, I think, too. So I, when you said that, it made me think of that. But But that's it's the eternal. If we can be eternal optimists, at, at least at our core, at that point, we can uh, we can deal with these minor failures or setbacks that occur and realize that every one of them can be a, string, a springboard to a wonderful comeback and, and that we can change our lives in meaningful ways. And uh, if we get to that point, we, we can affect so many people. I, I just, I cannot believe if, you know, having seen people do this before and doing it myself, I mean, once you reach that point, you realize how many people you're affecting. It just, you know, it's very exciting. Man, you give me so many segue today because <laughs> Jan Hope Bryan also said that 10% of the your attitude determined by what life hand you and 90% by how you choose to respond. Is this is a now? yes. This is a big deal because I, there's a there's a huge difference between being being active and being reactive, uh -huh. and, and being reactive is 
destructive to the point of it, it can destroy any of us and not only us, but our families. And, and so really shifting from that and realizing I, I don't have to react to everything. I don't have to attend every argument I'm invited to. Um, that's difficult for lawyers to do. We feel like we have to attend every <laughs> argument. Uh, but anyway, it, but if we can get away from that reactivity and find an internal sort of an internal pause or calm button that we might get from visualizing Fiji or the South Pacific or somewhere in the Caribbean, fill, fill in the blank with your happy, relaxing place. That that's really, uh, it's a powerful thing. It, it allows us to make a complete shift and, and move on to something else. It, it's forget it and drive on. <laughs> you, you know, um, I have quite a few mentor and, um, it, you know, to me, it's somebody that I contact uh, directly and talk and learn from uh, him or her. And sometimes that the book I read and uh, something that, that you know, um, uh, like Zig Ziglar. I met Zig Ziglar mm -hmm. a couple of times, but I have never paid him for coding or my mentor. But um, one thing that he put in the react and respond and i love it and like you just said like just like offer you whatever the situation is there are two ways you can do it one is react and other ones to respond right and you know because in our own um uh, thing when thing happened to us we reacted well right? we feel like we have to we yeah. it just it it's automatic but but that's the important thing huh we're not we're not really being present with making a decision we we have to slow down just a little bit. And if we can slow down a little bit, it, it just, it changes everything in yeah, very and powerful then, ways. And then what Brian talking about that, you know, that is sometimes that he understand, you know, the situation we are the human being, we can behave that way. So yes. he can up the 10% that you react to it, but he think that the success of his own experience or the people he know that the 9% they respond to the situation they don't yes. react and so now and then when that makes my all the time because i'm thinking about zig ziglar he said if you you know your your wife is a pharmacist uh, um you know do, do you know so sometimes you take the medicine if the medicine the response the good that they said um uh, you uh, you respond well to the um the medicine right true but if something we have to say oh that means you know, you react to the medicine. Yes, and, and then you have to make a shift to different medicine. I, obviously, yes, that's uh, yeah, that happens commonly. Well to, yes, to the and other ones react to the medicine. Right. That, that make me think. Okay, respond is a positive way. React is to say, oh no, no. It's, it's, it's right. Just, you know, I mean, it's something like that. I pick up and that was something that that, that the golden nugget that in my own twisted mind, I, I, I'm thinking about that and it, I remember forever. Yes, we, we, need to, we need to think before we act and, and not so much think before we react because we, we don't have to react to everything. I mean, we, we can let all kinds of things just blow right past us and we, you know, it, it's very powerful actually to realize I don't, I don't have to react to that. I want to, but I, I choose not to. I, life, is, life is too short to react to everything. We, we have to really focus on, you know, I try to tell myself, what if today is the last day of my life? I need to live my life that way. And if I can live my life that way, then I can focus on what I'm really here to do and not get caught up in, you know, nonsense that I shouldn't be doing anything with or things I shouldn't be reacting to at all. You know, Jeremy, I think that I'm, I have to send you a check to pay you because you give me so <laughs> much material today. Uh, today on my uh, aha moment, I'm talking about stop eyeballing, measure twice and cut one, you know? <laughs> Very good. Even you're using the uh, country, you know, I mean, it have to be precise, you know, and you have right. to measure twice and you cut one. And mm -hmm. in the literal one that, um, you know, you're using as a metaphor, you know, in the life situation, you know, don't react too quickly, you know, just think twice before you get a, um, you, you respond. So Yes. And that, that what was my I, I, I have a moment today that stop eyeballing, measure twice and cut one. 
That's a good quote. I might have to write that down. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, what do we need to um, cover this? Okay, so through this chapter, what do we learn? Well, I think there's a uh, uh, there's there's an aspect of courage in here, and it, it was described in the chapter two different ways: the the courage to begin something and the courage not to stop. And I would underline the perseverance is really something that permeates this whole chapter, that, mm -hmm. that we're always going to have something that goes wrong on a daily basis, but, but we have to let that go and focus on the long run, the strategic vision and um, our, our mission statement if we have one. And if we don't have one, we should write one. And... Uh, really that keeps us focused on what we're here to do but but we have to be courageous and authentic pause occasionally to uh relax and uh, as, but also to assess where we are we we have to take our temperature sometimes figure out where we are and if it's not in the right place then we have to move it to the place that we want it to be before we continue to ascend up the mountain I am glad you brought that thing up. That's what you learned. And thank you very much for sharing with me because that's what I, I need to remind myself to because that is a very valuable lesson because anybody can start. They, uh, you know, you can see a whole bunch of the people are out there, but the question is how many people finish the race, you know? Um, sure. So um, you, have, you need to have first the courage to start, but you need to to have the courage and to work on yourself and to, to endure the journey in order for you to finish the race. Yes, and, and we, can't, we can't treat life, every time we reach a destination, we can't act like it's the end because it's not. And, and that's why that lesson my father gave me was so important to remind me that you're going up here, but in order to do that, you can't stay here. And we have to keep, we have to keep moving forward and uh, keep that uh, forward momentum going. What, once our forward momentum is going, we, we have to keep moving forward. We, we can't look back and get caught up in negative things in the past that can tear us down and destroy us if we let, if we let them. I think that the very wise um, advice yeah, your father gave it to you um, because, um, you know, we, when you get to a certain um, station, you can see further. Therefore, you can set your mind, or set another goal to move, uh, continue to move forward. True. Um, but you know, and, and because when you get somewhere else and then you decide that, okay, uh, I'm done. You know, you, you just cannot um, to get there and then to only get there. You have to continue. Right. Yes, life is a journey and not a destination. And there are a lot of people, every time that uh, any of us fall, there are people watching and, and they're watching how we uh, respond to that. And, and if we respond in a positive way, it's going to inspire dozens of other people to do the same or, or do something better in a different way. Um, but, but if we complain about it and we're just negative and we react to everything and, and we're just we're, we're ready to punch everybody that does something wrong to us i we can't live our lives that way we can't i it just it's it, it it will completely destroy anyone to do that you know i i have a uh, two things that i want to mention to what you just said um you know um my, my i keep on saying about my father because that what i i store in my head and sometimes I just bring it down. He said, you quit, you fail. Simple as that. Hmm. You know, because if you continue, even you fail on your face and everything, but if you continue to go on, you are not failing yet because you are, you know, because you have, have not the end of the, the journey yet. So they cannot say that you fail because you're still in progress, right? G great point. And it, it reminds me of Thomas Edison, all his attempts to make uh, electricity work with the light. It, he just simply said, OK, well, th this approach didn't work. So I'm going to try this approach over here that I haven't tried. And he just he kept trying. I mean, a lot of life is trial and error that it, if we're persistent and perseverant, we're going to have success. It, but we have to persevere. If we don't persevere, 
forget it. it it's it's going to be we're just going to have a quitter mentality instead of the champion mentality that we need to have to be successful. Yeah, and, and, um, and you know, I want to bring one more point uh, in the book, and then we can uh, wrap it up. And I think that the one point that Jonathan tell, told Craig that is, you know, if you want to quit of something, you know that you have to get out of that state of mind, go hang around with the people, never quit, and you know they get on with their their journey. So because see, when when you are want to quit, you want to stop doing, and you happen to talk talk to a whole bunch of the people who are a quitter, they will give they support, they give you all the reason why you need to quit. Of course. You know, if, if you go on with somebody that who never quit, and they just say, you know, keep on going, keep on going, because you, you never know that. You know, or uh, you never know how close you are to get to your dream. So don't quit. Um, and, and you know, the people, um, that's why it's just so silly that you allow the people that who are the quitter advise you to quit because what else can they offer to you? That's true. And, and it's tough when those people happen to be people that are very close to us. You know, they, they can be family members, they can be close friends, but, but that's why that circle of five people, the inner circle that we all have, and maybe it's not uh, the number five, but, but the five or six, eight people that have the most influence on us, they have to be positive. Absolutely right. have to be positive or, or, or we're going to be where they are with our mindset and our spirit and our attitude. And it just, it has huge crossover effects to our own uh, uh, psychological makeup and mindset and spirit. Yeah, and you move on, you success, you make them look bad. Of course, they, they, you know, they, they want to pull you back. Uh, but more importantly, when you're talking about the family, that's why when you share your vision, you share your goal, you have to share with the right people. The people yes. have the right to hear your, to hear, to see your vision. You know, your family, it doesn't mean that um, they have the, they uh, they automatically have the right. Because see, sometimes those people have a different vision. They don't see what you see. True. And you know, I, you might want to keep them in the loving um, compartment where you know, yes. the family love and care about each other. But to share the vision, if, if they if they cannot if they they are not doing it they cannot see how can it be done True. So they can they forget that you are who you are your yes. own vision and you know your own ability so mm -hmm. be very very carefully to choose the people you share the role with and you're seeking for counsel because you just yes. cannot go to any Joe Schmo and said what do you think the giraffe have a tall uh, neck could see the up here and the turtle is at the bottom. The, he also have the opinion, but his opinion is just on the ground level. See, that's why very, very carefully to um, pick out the people. Yeah, the, the, you bring up the turtle and slow and steady wins the race. You know, we, <laughs> we, don't, we don't always have to be reactive rabbits to everything. We, we can pause like the turtle and, and we can still arrive at that destination and maybe it would be more meaningful to, to do that because we will have actually at least sorted through all the things that we have to go through in order to have a positive spin to arrive at that destination and be successful. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I'm glad that we studied this book together and we, we talked about too. that because we, we really um, peel so many layers. It, we don't just see it as the way it is, you know. True. We, 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 we look at it at, in the deeper level and then we carve that in our bone deep, you know. So I, I think that, that it will, um, wherever we are, um, we will be in the, the position that um, better than yesterday. Yes, I agree. It's uh, every day we have to peel the onion and get to the really get to what's essential and what matters the most because our, our time here is limited. I, I wish it were otherwise, but that's the way life is. You know, when you're talking about when you lived your life, you're thinking that your last day, um, you know, and that's why you have to, to live uh, fully so that you can die empty because what good is that you carry with you, you know? oh I, I love that i we we do have to be that fully present and, and it does allow us to be more powerfully present and it does cause a mind shift i i i just have noticed if i keep telling myself that I, i'm you know I, and it makes us more active we we find things we have in our to-do list and we find 
this is done, this is done, this is done, this is done. And, and when I don't focus to that extent, those things don't get done quite as quickly or quite as well. You know, um, when you say that, and let me share with you the story that I, I, um, I went to the school, uh, junior high um, classes, and I talked to the student, and uh, I am I believe in, in the uh, reverse engineering. Mm -hmm. So uh, those kids, they are just a junior high, so I just asking them 10 or five, 15 years from now, what do they want to see the headline write about them from the the Time magazine or uh, on the Light magazine and stuff like that. And I, I just say, push yourself there, you know, to see what you want to see, those words in print talking about you. And those kids have such a great imagination, you know, mm -hmm. and they, they, they so passionately thinking about their position in 10 or 15 years from now. And um, so when, when I, uh, we, we, I have a group on when I'm talking about that, you know, see, because they, when they know their purpose and because they know they, they have the destination for them to arrive to, so now I work backward with them because I will tell them, okay, that's what you want. So again, look back to see what you need to do. You know, if you want to go to Harvard University, and you have to go take some time and to figure out what do they expect of you. And then in the junior high, you start to prepare now. Right. Because you wait until you did your senior year in high school and you said, I want to go to Harvard. You know, I mean, granted, maybe you, you can go to get to harvest easily, but if not, you know, then you have a time to do the preparation for you to meet that requirement so you can apply to go to harvest. Yeah, we, we can't wait till it's too late. That, that's a great point. And I, I love the, you know, the exercise you talked about. Uh, we talk about writing your own epitaph, you uh -huh. know, what, what our gravestone would say. And, and we have to... We have to live with our legacy in mind. If we don't, we're not we're not living as powerfully as we're called to be here. Yeah. Um, and I just so that that's one of the most powerful exercises I think I've ever done. And, and sometimes what we might write on that epitaph might shift, but it does give us focus. And for those of us that lack that focus, uh, try it. See see what you come up with, and uh, you, you might be surprised what you end up writing down or what what you end up crossing out before you get to that last thing that you want to appear there. Yeah, and so I tap on that. And so I share you know, my, my, my thought on, the, on their estate and to their teacher and to their parents. And, um, you know, they, they couldn't help it, but they, they almost can see the headline because they're so passionately thinking about that and what they want to accomplish. And I mean, mm -hmm. they did a most beautiful thing. And I, um, I, I love that. So, so Jeremy, yes. that's a yes. goodbye. And uh, okay. we, um, you, uh, so talk about uh, next uh, episode. Okay, next episode is episode 10, and it's uh, Believing in Yourself. It's based on Chapter 12 of the Three Feet from Gold book. Mm -hmm. Greg Reed and Sharon Lecter, and uh, we'll be dealing with uh, Norman Vincent Peale next week, one of my favorite uh, inspirational positivists who had a huge impact on my life. Wrote The po Power of Positive Thinking, among other uh, very meaty, meaningful books. Yes, yeah, I I, I love him too, and um, you, you know he 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 the man done God work, you know, and so I couldn't wait yet until for the next chapter. So thank you, Good. Jeremy. Thank you. Th thank you very much. I I always feel so get feel so smart after our session because of talking to you. We always, you always bring the best in me. Well, I, I think you do that too. And I, I think together our uh, collective wisdom can help so many people, but, but we have to be, we have to be open and, and listen to each other. And if we listen at a deep level, you'd be surprised at what, what you might walk away with on a, on a daily basis. It's very, very powerful. Okay, so w w when you're talking about the power of listening, um, we have a few minutes. Can I go on another little thing sure. with you? Sure. Okay, you remember one time that I mentioned to you that I want to talking about the how to feng shui die heart. 
And so this, we talk about the five elements in medicine. And, um, but I don't use it in the, the medicine because I know nothing about the medicine. But the five element, the essential element in the Chinese is that um, fire, earth, uh, metal, water, and wood. So um, when you he talking, um, when they're talking about the fire element, they're talking about the warmness, you know, the connection, you know, from your heart to somebody's heart. And it is just like in a sort of very uh, relaxed and very um, caring environment, um, you know, with the warm fire, right? right. And the, the, um, the, the earth is the, the element of serving. You want to serve. Mm -hmm. So just because, you know, you connect with people and you never forget your purpose that you're there to serve them. Right. And, and then uh, the matter is uh, acknowledgement. So when mm -hmm. you want to serve people, you need to meet them where they are at. And the acknowledgement is, you know, the, the, the power of listening come in. You listen, you hear them. You hear them and you will meet them uh, where they are at. And you acknowledge, you know, when somebody says something to you, you acknowledge, you know, you might repeat it or you're asking them the question in, in the same line in order for them to know that you hear them. Yes. Right. And the water is out of the curiosity. Um, in the teaching uh, of the people guru out here, and they're talking about the selling, they want you to ask the question, but they're engineering question because they want to probing. They want to really dig deep into find what can they sell more to you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the curiosity should be you care enough, want to know about the person in order for you to serve them. Yes. Yeah. Great point. Great, uh, yeah. great insight. To, um, sometimes we don't show that authentic curiosity, no. but we do. It, we we need have much to. more powerful relationships, much yeah. deeper relationships. And then, and the wood is that like you give them a choice. You let them make the decisions. You know, uh, for instance, um, uh, you know the conversation you and I had before. You just say, "Oh, um, I want to say that, but I don't know if anybody listen to me or anybody will uh, hire me or so, something like that." Don't making the decision for them. Give them the information they needed, and give them the time and the space, and right. then be available answer the question. Do not make the the, the, the the decision for them. That I will respect. Right. You're right. See, and that's that why uh, I, I want to talk about that because it is very, very important. I agree. It is. Thank you. Thank you for uh, th thank you for going through the uh, five elements. That's uh, you know, it's a little more difficult for me to analyze all of them. I'm I'm newer to looking at uh, those things, but, but, but it, it's you very think interesting. It, yeah, yeah, I, I think love it, the uh, concept. You know, fire is connect warmly. Earth is you want to serve and the metal that you meet them uh, where they are at, you acknowledge them. And then right. the water of the curiosity and the, the wood, it, you give them space and time and mm -hmm. to be available to answer any question, you will not make the decision for them. You give them all the information they need for them to come arrive to their own decisions. Good. Yes. Okay. So that's it. All right. So let my friend talk to you later. All right. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.